Okay, so if you didn't notice by the title of this video, this is part two of the Manji lore. If you haven't already seen part one, go check that one out first. Anyway, picking up where we left off, we had just gone through Manji's version of the old Heroes Gladius quest. So, <laughs> while this quest still exists in the game today, you actually have to go through Manji's brother, Chunji, instead. Chunji tells the story in a slightly different manner. Decades ago, his brother Manji went into a colossal cave in the middle of the island where he discovered the Balrog that is spoken of in stories and legends, of large wings and fangs sharp as any blade. Manji knew he couldn't defeat it, and he prepared for the end when Balrog charged him. But a man with a mysterious glimmering blade appeared and held off Balrog long enough for Manji to escape. That man was the great hero, Tristan. Manji got out safely thanks to him, but Tristan was wounded and fell over the cliff. Manji rushed to find him, and as Tristan was dying, he gave Manji the old Gladius and closed his eyes. Now, Manji wants to restore the Gladius to its original state. So actually, Chunji has some pretty janky, busted dialogue here. After he tells his story, he literally has Manji's old quest dialogue in the first person view from Manji's point of view. I don't really understand why they felt the need to move Chunji here and then give him all of Manji's quests, but he even has Manji's apprentice quest which also has some busted dialogue. Technically, it could have made narrative sense had they not just been like, hey, can I copy your homework, and then barely rewrote the quests. A very simple fix for all of this would have been for Chunji to just have been working on Manji's requests, and then having trouble gathering the materials needed, or being unable to locate Mu Young. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire Balrog quest in this video. I'll be making a separate video to cover all that. But the basics of it is that Manji actually ended up sealing Balrog with the help of Tristan's spirit, though he sort of has PTSD from the experience. Now that Balrog seems to be breaking free of his seal, Manji is almost drawn to it. He sends his apprentice, Mu Young, to investigate. Mu Young hasn't reported back for a month since his last message, which causes Manji to worry, and you end up searching for Mu Young. You find him, speak with Tristan's spirit, and you gather an expedition to reseal Balrog with Mu Young's help. All things done, Mu Young decides to stay around longer to keep an eye on everything, and you let Manji know his apprentice is fine and that you were successful. And he's kind of proud of you and Mu Young. The end. Again, these quests have moved from Manji to Chunji with a bunch of jank and make much less sense now, but yeah. Speaking of horrible jank, there's a bunch of dual blade quests that completely screw with the story of Manji, Tristan, Mu Young, and the Balrog. They're super long to explain the full story and They'll probably have their own respective videos as well. To summarize though, Tristan and Manji decide to seal Balrog, who has resurrected, and they enlist the help of the former Dark Lord, Sung. They plan to meet up at the entrance of the tomb, but Manji and Tristan get held up. Dark Lord Sung faces Balrog alone for some reason and ends up losing his soul, transforming into a monster. His daughter, Lady Sil, gets worried and so the Dark Lord's apprentice, Jin, goes searching for his master. Only finding a monster, he slays it and then it turns back into Sung. He thanks Jin for stopping him, telling him to take care of Kerning City and his daughter's Sil, and to not tell a soul about what happened. Tristan and Manji show up at this time and see a boy standing over their dead friend and they don't bother asking him anything or stopping him, and the boy leaves with the body, only telling them his name, Jin. Tristan and Manji still go seal the Balrog, and Tristan sacrifices himself while Manji still lives to this day. The end. That's the old lore though. Nexon decided that this wasn't good for whatever reason, and they rewrote the Dual Blade story to include hints of the Black Mage's commander Lotus and throw away the Balrog. I'm not going to explain it here because it's not relevant to Manji at all, but at one point in the story they're looking into Tristan's accounts of what happened the day of Dark Lord Sung's death. You end up searching for Tristan's apprentice, Mu Young. Tristan's spirit shows up to actually tell you everything, which is a bunch of terrible story inconsistencies, and Mu Young even mentions his master's ghost shows up uninvited a lot. There's zero mention of Manji at all. Now I have no idea why they would possibly think that Mu Young was ever Tristan's apprentice rather than Manji's, and in fact, when you go turn in and accept the quests, Mu Young's little dialogue whenever you speak to him literally says, I'm Mu Young, the apprentice of Master Manji. Honestly, they should have just kept the old Dual Blade storyline because in the current, there's even worse inconsistencies than that, but I won't go into it here. So moving on from that disappointment, Manji's little brother Ilji actually fits in quite well with the lore. 
So while Aran's original quests still remain relatively the same, they have been tweaked a little tiny bit, and some of them have been removed. So, of course, <laughs> this part has been removed, but Aran would meet Ilji while investigating Francis the puppeteer. Ilji would say that his whole family are swordsmen, and their tradition is that once you reach a certain age, you leave home to explore life as a swordsman. He made his way to Sleepy Wood to follow in his brother's footsteps and best Balrog himself, but he's kind of scared of monsters. Ilji being afraid of monsters is expanded upon a little later in both of the Luminous and Kaiser class quests. Lumi's quests have also shoveled around a bit due to Kerning Square and Korean Folktown having been removed from the game while they were being revamped, but originally while searching for the third augury, Luminous is looking for a warrior with a magical family heirloom. Ilji says that his family does indeed have one of those according to his brother, but he's never seen the treasure. He does ask for a little help first, so by helping out in his basic quests with the Drake training and aiding Gwyn, Luminous has proved himself to Manji. Before Manji hands over the augury, he asks for the name of the organization Luminous was part of, to which Luminous answers Aurora, the name that Manji expected to hear. Luminous thinks to himself that it is very admirable that the family kept their promise through the centuries. Currently, instead, this is for the final augury rather than the third, and instead of helping Ilji at all, Luminous just talks to him first to find out about Manji and then goes straight to Pyrion. Manji, of course, must first test Luminous, so he has him defeat monsters in the Burnt Lands. Pretty basic. In Kaiser's quests, right after informing Nineheart that the Nova have agreed to ally together, Kyle gets a whiff of evil aura from Sleepywood, and as he investigates, he finds Ilji, who asks for help. Kyle mentions the evil aura, and Ilji says that they've got plenty of that at the Cursed Temple because it's cursed. Anyway, Ilji's been training, but something has gone wrong, and Kyle might be able to help him get back on track. These are basically the Drake training quests. Those quests are available for everybody now, regardless of class. So while Ilji introduces himself, he says that he came to Sleepy Wood to get stronger, but the drakes are so scary he can't train. Their big teeth, scary claws, and huge eyes frighten him stiff, and he needs help learning how to defeat them. You basically defeat each type of drake, discovering their attack patterns, and you help Ilji learn them. Copper drakes attack with a simple charge, so all he has to do is watch carefully and keep them at bay. Red drakes breathe fire at anybody, unlucky enough to walk past their cave, so he needs to keep a lot of recovery items around and hope for the best. Ice Drakes are deeper within the caves, but they have a longer attacking range, so he has to be even more careful than before and watch his back. And finally, for the Dark Drakes, he just has to combine all the techniques together. Ilji tells you that you wouldn't believe how strong he's gotten, and he's even using the tips that you give him to train. When you beat up the Drakes, it reminds him a lot of his older brother, but he'll never forget all that you've done for him, and he'll be a powerful warrior whenever you next return. Since the Iran quests that involve Ilji have been removed, some of that dialogue got moved into the Ilji Helps the Ill quests, which were introduced during the Renegade's Jet update. You meet Ilji, who says that he's traveling the land, learning the way of the sword. His whole family is made up of swordsmen, as is tradition, and he's planning on following his brother's footsteps to break the Balrog by himself. And he got all the way down to the Cursed Temple entrance, deep inside of Sleepywood, where he found an adventurer who had collapsed, but Ilji wasn't strong enough to pull him out himself. The man was knocked out at the entrance of the temple, and Ilji wants you to deliver some medicine there. When you get there, you find Gwyn awake, but hurt, as he can't move his legs. He asks if that boy, Ilji, sent you, and if it was him, then he has two life debts to pay. You help Gwyn retrieve his bag and a lost key to a hidden entrance within the cursed sanctuary, but afterwards, one last thing before you head off. If you're going back to Sleepywood, Gwyn wants you to give his diary to Ilji. He thinks the boy could use a little bit of direction, and his words may help. The description of Gwyn's diary says that it details the battles and adventures of Gwyn, and would be a great help to any fledgling warrior. When you finally get back to Sleepywood and find Ilji, he asks if the injured guy is okay. You hand him Gwyn's diary, and he says he's going to read the whole thing and get super strong. There's also a tiny little mention of Ilji at the very end of Aran's current quest. Though I think it's a mistake and actually meant to be about Manji, when Lillian writes the letter for the Empress that contains all the organized information about the seal stones and the black wings, Aran takes it to a rev, but Nineheart stops her. Since Aran isn't a Cygnus Knight, Nineheart won't let it be delivered because it's potentially something dangerous that even Ilji isn't aware of. But yeah, I think he means to say Manji rather than Ilji. So that fully covers Manji's two brothers and his apprentice. 
Manji has been involved in a few events over time, but I'm not going to go over all of them because some don't have much in the way of story, but there are a few that are pretty interesting. So this isn't actually an event, but once you achieve level 20 in your ambition trait, you get a quest to visit Manji in Pyrion, who explains that ambition isn't given, it's grasp. You follow by his example, hunting powerful monsters such as Iron Hogs, and as you finish, Manji rewards you with the Humble Honor Medal. So I don't think that we ever receive this event because it's still in untranslated Korean in the game files, but it's meant to be part of the 2000 Days event from when the game had turned 2000 Days Old. The Maple Admin says it takes 2000 stories to make a book, so you're meant to collect stories of adventure. You end up gathering Manji's, Gwyn's, and Ericsson's tales. Again, this wasn't technically live in the game, but the quest log says that Manji started his adventures alongside the very first adventurers in Maple World. He would rather not retell his tales, so he hands you his old diary. So during an update to Star Planet, in the version 163 Firepower update, a new minigame called The Legends Returned was introduced. Star Planet was closed a little over a year later, but the minigame comes back from time to time during event periods. In this minigame, you could actually take the form of Manji, whose skills included Slice, Triple Slice, Ankle Sweep, Sky Splitter, and Heart of the Sword. In the version 192 New Year Showdown update, we actually got a pretty dope piece of artwork when the Legends Return minigame got updated with Ryud. In the artwork, we see Manji and Mike facing off against each other. What's cool about this is that in the super old Evan quests, that of course have also been removed, you would join the Perion Guard and basically work for Mike, Evan ends up asking a little bit about him, who mentions that he's a lot more experienced than the other guard, Luke. There was even a time when Mike used to compete with Manji, but he quickly covers that up saying, wait, never mind. While that small mention seems like a side comment and was even eventually removed from the game, I think it's really cool that like years later they kind of expanded on that idea a little bit with the Legends Return minigame. Also, during the 10th anniversary, there was an event called the Secret History of Monsters, when you're learning the story of Axe Stumps. You talk to various Hyperion residents, and Black Bull mentions that Maji has spoken about stumps before, but he seems to have a great respect for them. I'm not going to go over it completely here, because it could probably be its own video, but Maji says a stump carried an axe to him and wanted to be struck with it. So that's just about it. But there's one last thing about Manji I wanted to cover. Manji happens to be one of the surviving Pyrion residents in Lucid's future of Twilight Pyrion, which is accessed through the Gate of the Future in the Temple of Time. In this made-up future of Pyrion, the Resistance turn to evil and they end up taking over Pyrion, turning a lot of the residents into slaves. Some of the residents have escaped and made their own camp away from the town. Aeon, who is also still alive, tells you that Manji has been keeping the tribal refugee camp safe but she's worried that he hasn't been eating properly. Manji tells you that Stumpy used to guard Pyrion, but the Black Mage has done something to it, and now it's just a threat. He wants to fight the Golems and the Ghostwood Stumpy, but cannot do it on his own. Also, that the Golems are being driven by the spirits of Pyrion's warriors, so you need to collect warrior hearts and bring them to Black Bull to complete a memorial ceremony for the fallen warriors. But yeah, that's about it for Manji's lore. Personally, when I was much younger, I never really liked the character because he seemed so out of place amongst Pyrion's theme. I remember getting sent to Ariant by Manji and getting stuck there because I couldn't figure out how to leave for the longest time until somebody eventually showed me how. It was a pretty long time until I eventually only accepted the old Gladius quest, but I thought that the story was so cool. And learning everything about Manji now, though, I think he might be one of my favorite characters. And I hope Nexon continues to utilize him. So recently, I've been putting out videos on a schedule of once a week on Mondays. If you want to subscribe and click the little bell icon, you can get a notification for when I actually do get around to making another video. Also, if you enjoy any of the lore, share the videos with your friends or something. It would actually help a lot. But anyway, if there's anything important that I'm missing, let me know.